This video was sponsored by Vessi. What is the oldest human occupation? Okay, fine, it's prostitution, but what is the second oldest human occupation? You guessed that spies gathering intel espionage. Why? Well, all spying really is is getting information, getting knowledge about our enemies before we make a move. This type of knowledge is also known as foreknowledge. And because information about our enemies, about the world around us is so vital to our basic survival, spying quickly emerged as humanity's oldest occupation, second only to our more intimate urges. As Sun Tzu said, if you think about it, the only way to get ahead in life to crush your enemies, whether that be other nations or a dictator you want to take down or oil fields you want to control or the current global superpower that you want to destroy so you can take the throne, to cement your name in the history books. If you want to do any of this, you're gonna need foreknowledge, intelligence. And the only way to get that intel on what your enemies are up to, you're not gonna get it by praying to the gods, but from other men. So the million dollar question becomes, how do you go about getting said intel from other men? Well then, let's learn the arts of spycraft. Spycraft is one of the most misunderstood and misrepresented professions in the world. And for good reason, the more the public knows about how their country's espionage works, the more your enemies know too. You can't tell when clandestine operations go well, but you sure can when they don't, leading the public not to value spying all that much. And at the end of the day, espionage is all about collecting that juicy intel on our enemies. There are two ways you can go about this. The first way is to collect intel overtly. This is through reading newspapers, the press, all the public information that comes out of an enemy's country, whether it be from journalists or your average citizen. The problem with this public information is just that, it's public. You're not gonna find many secrets in there, but if you do, it's gonna take a lot of manpower to find that needle in the haystack. The other problem is that overt intel collection only works if the country has this pesky thing called freedom of press. If it's a place like China where disobedient journalists magically disappear from time to time, good luck finding anything of value and better luck not falling for any fake intel their government planted in there. That is why clandestine intel collection or espionage, the official name for it, always has a place in this world. The essence of espionage is access. Here's how it generally works. You choose the objective of what you want to know about your enemy. The target is usually something large and easily recognizable like missile testing grounds or a nuclear plant, but it can also be smaller things like conversations, files, or what have you. Since the intel you want to know is probably important to your enemy, they're gonna place very difficult obstacles in your way to your target. The more control the enemy has over its own people, the more obstacles they're able to set up. This can be the geographical location, security, very strict protocols, etc. Now that you have the target ID'd, you need to get an agent or some kind of device close enough to the target to get access to that target to gather the intel you need while not arousing any attention from those who protect the target. Once you collect the intel, your agent then has to deliver the intel to you without it getting lost or intercepted in route. Intel is useless if it takes too long to get back to you, so speed is of the essence in this part of the journey. Now that you understand how clandestine operations work, let's take a look at the agents that carry out these risky missions. Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. There are five different types of spies. Native spies getting locals that live within your enemy's borders to spy for you. Internal spies getting insider officials to relay intel to you. Double agent spies when you get a hold of an enemy spy and get them to turn on their country for you. There are also expendable spies. Basically pawns where you have them feed the enemy false information to throw them off, knowing that the enemy will probably kill that spy once they find out the intel is fake. And lastly, there are living spies. Our spies that do the clandestine operations that we just talked about. They go off to infiltrate the enemy, get access to the objective, and come back alive to tell the tale. These are usually the type of spies people are referring to when they think about the typical secret undercover agent. Because a spy's job is so dangerous, they require a certain set of skills. You are able to judge people well to tell whether or not a person is BSing you, not telling you the whole story, if they have ulterior motives. You need to be able to work well with others under some very difficult circumstances. You're able to pick up very small details like body language, clothing, etc. You're able to adapt and blend into different cultures. And of course, you're able to keep your mouth shut when you need to. Once you get past those basic traits, 
intelligence agencies will typically need people with a very specific background or set of skills for each clandestine operation. Maybe they need a middle-aged man married, knows English and French, and has a background in engineering or coding, for example. They'll enter these requirements into their database, comb through all the potential agents for this mission, and hopefully will find the right person for the job. But this is typically where you run into some roadblocks. First off, if they're able to gain access to a target, they probably won't be able to stay there for very long. Secondly, if an agent is skilled enough to break into a nuclear weapons facility in China or the Soviet Union back in the days, they probably wouldn't have the knowledge to report back anything meaningful about these complex targets. After all, if you don't know much about nukes, you're probably not going to discover anything new about them no matter how close you get to one. So these types of spies have their limits. This is where plants come in. No, not those kind of plants. Planted agents are agents that are somehow able to penetrate the target and stay there for an extended period of time, usually by acting as an official or employee there. The biggest advantage of planted agents is that since they appear on the outside to be on the same team as the enemy, the enemy usually just assumes that your agent is one of the good guys and don't look further into them. The only way to have planted agents today is either by using illegals or by turning someone who's already on the inside. Illegals, not illegal immigrants, are deep cover agents that are rebuilt from the ground up with new fictional backgrounds through years and years of training. Very large part of the training was operational work, determination as to whether you're being under surveillance, Morse code, uh, shortwave radio reception. Their agency makes them fake documents, passports, and their fake identity has to be backstopped. If your fictitious identity is from Germany, you have to be able to talk, act, and have the same mannerisms as someone who grew up there. The agency has to set up contingencies to make sure that if you were investigated by the enemy, there are people or documents in Germany that confirms your origin. Agencies will even sometimes look at gravestones and cemeteries to find a dead person that matches your age to use. And one day, a diplomat out of the Soviet embassy in Washington came across this tombstone just outside of D.C. And they said, guess what, we have a birth certificate, are you going to the U.S.? And that was the Jack Barsky birth certificate? The Jack certificate. Barsky bir birth certificate that somebody had obtained and I was given. I didn't have to get this myself. Now obviously, grooming illegals takes a lot of resources and time. And if you can't insert an illegal into your target, your other option is to find someone who's already inside. This can be someone who's already in the perfect spot to gather intel for you, or it can be someone who's just starting their career or in the middle of their career, climbing up the ranks, and will eventually graduate into the spot you're after. The benefit of these types of spies are that they're already perfectly qualified to interpret the information. They're already trusted by an enemy and won't take years of training like an illegal. These type of people are what we call in place. Why would an insider turn on their own country? There are many motivations. Maybe a young Russian adventurer was lured by the money and materialism of the West. Maybe today, a Chinese official is starting to feel disillusioned with what their regime is up to. Maybe the trader can see that their ship is sinking right before their eyes and they want to jump onto a new ship before it's too late. Maybe you spy on them, find some dirt, and blackmail them into becoming an agent for you or else. Your job is to simply learn a potential trader's key pain points and make them an offer they can't refuse. Once you have whatever kind of agent or plant you manage to get on the inside, they'll do their job and hopefully have some intel to relay back to you. So now it's time to collect that intel. Collecting that intel is pretty simple. Agents can place bugs, hidden cameras, take pictures with their phone, etc. Getting that intel back to their superiors is a different story. Today with the internet and dark web, it's probably pretty easy to relay information back to whatever agency you're working for. For example, back in the Cold War days, spies had to get a little creative with passing on their intel. There's the classic brush passes where an agent nonchalantly gives their handler intel in a public place while walking past each other or sitting down. There are dead drops where spies drop off intel at specific locations. Illegals would have radios that they would use to transmit intel back to Moscow or wherever. One cool trick they did to avoid getting tracked down as they were transmitting would be to record the report beforehand and play the recording back through the radio at a faster speed. The motherland would then slow down the audio to understand it. And as late as 2010, it was found that Russian sleeper agents in America used more modern clever ways to relay information back to Russia. The illegals sat in coffee shops and flashed messages from their laptops to suspicious vehicles parked outside. Coded texts were embedded in images posted online. And of course, there has been a long history of spies using codes and ciphers to encrypt messages before sending it back and forth. Now, if you're gonna subvert your enemies with spies, you can bet that they're probably gonna do the same to you. This is where counterintelligence comes in protecting your nation and your power against outside espionage. For counterintelligence, you basically do the opposite of what you do to spy on other nations. 
for our clandestine operations, remember? We picked the target, figured out how to get past the obstacles in the way, chose someone to get access to that target, either an agent or by turning someone who's already in place. And this is how other powers are gonna approach infiltrating your nation as well. So find out what foreign intelligence agencies would likely want to know about your plans, figure out how they're gonna go about doing so, what kind of people they're gonna use, and of course who those spies are. Catching spies is a little bit outside the scope of this video, so let's assume you catch a foreign spy. What do you do next? Well, we have a very big opportunity here. See, on one hand, you can expose them and put an end to your enemy's espionage operation, but you don't really get anything else beyond that. On the other hand, if you can turn the spy into a double agent, you can fool your enemy into thinking that they still have the upper hand while also spoon-feeding them false information from their trusted agent. Turning a double agent is surprisingly pretty easy. In the US, espionage is punishable by up to 20 years in prison, so many spies will gladly take a deal over two decades in prison or the possible death sentences of other countries. Once you have an enemy spy under your control, start by having them report back real intel to the superiors. Real intel that they can verify but is also harmless so everything seems to be going okay. Your hope is that the mother country will give them more assignments. More assignments means that you can get more intel on what your enemy is after, their methods, maybe even other spies on the ground, and the more assignments, the more opportunities for you to subvert them right back. So now that you know the importance of spycraft, getting intel about your enemies from other men, how espionage is all about gaining access to a target via agents or plants, how agents can relay intel back to you and the importance of counterintelligence, you now have almost all the tools you need to spy your way to world domination. If you want to be a spy yourself, you could get into some tricky situations. Especially if you're spying in not so friendly parts of the world. You might have to evade capture, fight, participate in a real life chase scene straight out of a James Bond movie. The problem is this is going to happen while you're undercover. And if you're undercover, you're probably not going to be wearing combat boots. You're going to be in casual attire that blends in. Casual attire that usually doesn't lend itself well to running or fighting. This is where Vessi comes in. The world's first waterproof knit shoes. They offer very stylish shoes that blend in yet are 100% waterproof. Whoa. <laughs> that's crazy to see. Man, it just bounces right off. This isn't some waterproof coating that's gonna rub off either. It's integrated directly into the fabric itself, and let me tell you, it's pretty trippy to see in person. What's cool is that even though it's waterproof, they're still very much breathable and lightweight as other non-waterproof shoes of its kind. They sent me their everyday sneakers in black because what other color would I get? And I've been wearing them for the past few weeks and have been loving it. They're just as light as my Adidas sneakers, but waterproof, super comfy, and here's what happened when I try to get some B-roll for the sponsor spot at the beach. Needless to say, the waterproofing still held up. But on top of that, I was on an outdoor event last month during a hurricane in Texas. It was pouring, mud and water seeped through the walls of my shoes and got my socks all wet the entire time, and I would have killed for a pair of shoes like these. Really impressed, definitely worth the money, they have a few different styles you can pick from including their new weekend design, and if you use the code Jake at vessifootwear.com slash Jake, you'll get an additional $25 off along with their standard free shipping and free exchanges. So get yourself a pair and prepare your feet for whatever life throws at it, whether that be puddles, outdoor adventures, or the occasional spy chase. Are you guys excited for No Time to Die to finally come out in theaters? I know I sure am. Screw you, Pandemic. Let me know if you guys want more spy videos. Maybe we can do like one on corporate espionage or maybe one specifically on like illegals. Just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, we make video essays just like this one every single week on the most provocative stuff in the world of business. So if you enjoyed this one, you will probably enjoy the other one. So make sure you click that subscribe button and the notification bell below. If you want like behind the scenes stuff, day in the life kind of stuff, memes, me complaining about stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. We have a ton of fun over there. So yeah, jaketrend.io. Do you guys like this Godfather vibe we have going on out here? We're trying out some new stuff, so let me know what you guys think. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. So thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. Stay dangerous out there. And I'll see you guys in the next one. You shouldn't stay. Why well, you shouldn't look like that. You know, I think you're wrong. I am. We always have a choice. I'll drink to that. <laughs>